mostly wearing this because I'm cold. What? Didn't we just have a talk about safety? I know, I was joking. <laughs> Assuming, like, you know, it's hard to tell at that boost because we're not really cranking. Did you grab a scramble at all? No, I didn't think to. I should have. But I held it out really long. It could have been 135. Yeah, I'd say 133, 134 easily. Was it moving around or anything? No, no it was just head spot. straight. It came up really nice, though. Yeah, it could have taken more through the middle, but I'll show you the log. It could have took more launch RPM, too, I think. It was, it was 60. 155. That's pretty fucking good. Honestly. My burnout was I've never been either. better than a 155, 60 foot there. As soon as it rolled out of the prep, it stuck. Yeah. So, you didn't get much of a burnout. You wasn't even really in the rubber. That's a, like a really good first round virgin road tune, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was really smooth. Like, I was like, I held it for so long, and I was like, is this thing ever going to go fast? <laughs> It's just so weird when you go so many weekends going really fast, and then you go Virgin Road shit, and you're like falling asleep at the wheel. But that wasn't even on edge. No. Not even close. I'm gonna say that road could probably take a low 580. I think you can go 560s. We've been, we've been 580 there on AB in a truck. High 70 then on a couple burnouts. That'll go up 60 right now.
trying to leave at a higher RPM and kill timing. Yeah. That's the first time he's ever tried it. It's just when the timing came in, it was too aggressive. Yeah, because he only held it for point three. Hit it too hard at the launch, but it's really fat. Like, it's just lazy down low. Well, that converter's, that's not the same converter. Yeah, it seems tighter. Yeah. I don't think it's fat. I think it's, it might be fat. But it's I can, fat. It is? Yeah, it's fat. So what we're doing is we're going to make a change in the fuel curve on this carburetor. And these carburetors have what's called boost reference power valves. And they open at a predetermined amount of boost to add additional fuel to the air fuel mixture. And these are adjustable so that you can set them to open at like two or three pounds of boost or you can turn them all the way up to like seven or eight pounds of boost before they open. And right now it's set to come open like two or three pounds of boost, like instantly. So we're gonna go ahead and pull them out. We're gonna make an adjustment and see if it gets better. Makes it come up on the trans brake really slow when it's adding all that fuel. Yeah. When you're trying to come up on the trans brake, get to the chip, the best way is lean. So, the quickest way is lean. This is the boost reference power valve, this piece right here. And the center of it is threaded, and you can turn that in and put pressure on the spring behind that. And the more pressure you put on the spring, the more boost you have to build before the power valve opens. And when they're flush, they open almost immediately. And this one, isn't quite flush, but it's out there pretty good ways, so. Make some adjustments here. I feel so awkward with that big ass camera in here. <laughs> I, did, I did too at first. Dude, I feel like I'm on a television show. Yeah, or like something. it feels like Street Outlaws cameras. Imagine how I feel <laughs> walking up to somebody with this big camera. It's a little more intimidating. Slightly overkill, slightly obnoxious. How much did you go in on it? As far as I can. Perfect. Hold the arm over there. So, when you lean out a car coming off the trans brake in the first couple seconds of the run, when you lean a car out, it makes a lot more power. Right now, I was kind of compensating for how rich it was by leaving on more RPM than I normally would because I knew it was a little rich. So now we're going to back the RPM down to like where I would normally leave out like 36 or 3700 for bare asphalt. And it should go down, um, but it should be a lot cleaner and make more, more power through the middle. Now it's like, ee. How did we ever do without PFI? It just sucked. It just sucked. <laughs> I just drove it. Just had to make a lot of changes all the time, depending on where we were at, what we were doing. All right. You see those? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're taking the 4000 chip out, putting the 3700 chip in it. Um, old school. See down here, like go in right here, right in the side. I don't have a legacy cable for this thing. Otherwise, I'd be able to adjust it with the laptop, but 
uh, I wasn't able to find one. These things are like ancient now, and I guess nobody nobody carries them in stock anymore. So we're stuck putting chips in. Is that why they say up on the chip? Yeah, this is a chip. I didn't know that's what that actually meant. Oh my god. Dude, Thomas. I was born in 2001. <laughs> yeah, when it's, when they say you're up on the chip, that's why. Because it used to be a rev limiter chip. It's an your actual fault. You're supposed chip. to teach me these things. You won't listen. Thomas used to the ra da 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 ra da da 300 RPM is a lot, so it doesn't take much out of it. And it's also going to take some boost away from it. It's got like six pound gauge springs, but it only make at 3,700. It only make like two. So, so the last hit, it left at 4,000 RPM, which is a little high. And the reason I was doing that is because I know it's a little bit rich, and I didn't want it to stumble. So now instead of doing that and doing it the wrong way we're going to take a little bit of fuel away from it down low make it leaner make more power and lower the rpm on the launch so it doesn't kick the tire right at the hit um, hopefully it goes down this time because last time you would have beat me by about a full second so turn the pump on so you can check for leaks real quick you gotta make you gotta quit making these comparisons that's the only thing i got to compare to i mean i've been fast on It's fine. Well, unless I didn't have it tight enough. Part of the problem is this thing's been apart and back together so many times that the dowel pins that are supposed to line this are worn down to a nub and you almost kind of have to guess by the bowl screws whether you've got the gasket on right or not. It's probably part of the problem. Screws are loose, son. It's up under 
underneath the carburetor. Status report. I'm grouchy as hell. Got it. Anytime he's got to work on a carburetor, it gets grouchy. No, anytime you let the son of a bitch go until it's literally about to catch fire, and it shows every sign that there's a problem. The intake stain blue. He like, doesn't know how to work on the carburetor. Yeah, but I do. All you got to do is say, hey, Dad, I think the fucking carburetor's got a leak. And then I take the carburetor off Cut. and I fix it. <laughs> Uh, I think you just need more lock washers. Lock washers? Yeah. Or quart gaskets. gaskets. I got quart gaskets. I got quart gaskets on everything except for the LS. Obviously. They don't even have gaskets. The machine surface is so good on an LS. That LS just pisses excellence. It's got a front cover You're and poking a, a bear right now. Only when it wakes up in the morning. That's the only time it pisses excellent. The LS is definitely showing me up tonight so far. It's not the LS. It's the car. I want to start this up without the hat on at first. It's got to see some boost for it. Already been drilled out once. It's corroded down in there. Alcohol's eating it up. The only thing I can do is drill it out and helicoil it tomorrow back to this size. I'll have to go down to more. Oh, it's, there's nothing left of it. How the hell did this thing even run? <laughs> I mean, look at that. So in the matter of 10 minutes, we've stripped out everything. Everything. Literally everything. Everything's falling apart. The methanol is just eating everything up. You welded the steering shaft? Oh, I didn't weld it. Yeah, it actually, it wasn't my idea. Whose idea was it? It wasn't my idea. That's Bucko's. <laughs> okay, Rob said, let's tack it. I let's said, just let's tack, tack, it. Just tack it on. Tack it on. And Bucko burned her in. <laughs> What'd you do? The, the steering shaft is welded onto the steering column. It's supposed to have a bolt, a removable bolt. You know, the bolt touched the headers, so we couldn't do yeah, a bolt. Yeah, anymore. I pulled the truck in here earlier and I couldn't steer it. Now that the motor is Why? sitting in the... Because it was getting caught on the header so bad to the point where like... Now that the engine's straight in the, in the truck, it's now touching the steering shaft really bad. I had to do like a 15, no, it's not that bad, but it's pretty bad. It was so bad that when you would steer it, it would lift the cab up on this side. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, it, was, it had one of those new bolts. They're called self-clearance. There it is right there. That was the self-clearance bolt. Mm -hmm. Go Warriors. I can't, I just can't, I can't no more. I can't. Dear God. Dear God. That thing is a death trap. It's literally a death trap. You would think it would fucking hurt me, but the only thing that's tried to hurt me so far is the Nova. <laughs> you know, I'm going to need you to go over there and knock on the fake wood on the wall.
better to you? It sounded like it came up cleaner. Before it was real lazy trying to come up. So what all did you guys have to fix? Well, this uh, the cold side on this has no rubber couplings. It's 100% rigid. Everything's rigid. And if it's not absolutely perfect with the carburetor height, it puts everything on a bind and it's been the hat has been pulling on the carburetor stud for I, I don't know how long but it's been pulling on the stud for a while and that constantly puts that stud under pressure and it tries to rip the stud out of the main body and we've already fixed it like twice before but this time it was really bad this is like its last go around but we fixed the main stud we had to put an adapter in it and rethread a different uh, I couldn't use a helicoil because a helicoil you have to drill it out way too big. So Mark hooked us up with some kind of an adapter thing he had from like 1980. <laughs> he had it upstairs in the shop. Uh, but we fixed it with that and we made some adjustments on the boost reference power valves. Uh, and then the base plate was loose last night. We found that. It was spewing fuel. Like, I don't know how this thing ran. I don't know how he won that race because Robbie says it's been leaving traces of blue stain on the intake and the top loop's blue, so that's fuel. But it, he said it's been doing that for a long time, but I don't know how long the base plate's been loose, but it's been spewing fuel out. It's a miracle it didn't catch fire. This thing's just been raced nonstop for so long and you know, it gets raced and just put away and raced and put away and it just needs some attention. It's, it sucks that the Nova got wrecked because uh, if we could lean on the Nova and set this aside for a little bit, take it apart and go through everything and like show it some attention. But this thing has had to race every weekend for years and years and years and years, not every weekend, but you know what I'm saying? It's just. This has, been, this has been the main content creator for the channel since day one, and it's tired. It's, it's needing some attention. I don't think it's tired, but it just needs some attention, well, safety-wise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the engine's fresh. Now the transmission's fresh. The Mosier 9-inch has never given us any trouble. But I'm just saying, like, the motor mounts were warped and yeah. stretched and... The converter bolts were falling out of it. The holes were all wallered out. The bell housing bolts kept coming out of it because it didn't have a mid plate. And the front frame twists so bad. Like, if you ever look at the pictures or videos of this, the front bumper will be almost two and a half or three inches higher on this side, leaving the starting line than that side. That's because the front frame twists. It doesn't have any strut bars. The cab had some pieces that were welded from the cab to the frame to make it solid and those had ripped so the cab had been twisting on the frame. It's just, it's just been a mess. Alright guys, so unfortunately the rain came and screwed our testing chances. Um, I was hoping to make one more last night but everything started working against us and we ended up having to go to Mark's today and come up with a solution for getting this carburetor back together and getting the hat back on it. Finally got all that straightened out and it's not leaking anymore and uh, got the carb hat on it like I said and everything seems good but now it's raining and it's going to rain for the next three days so we're not going to get the test any for the foreseeable future. It's um, crazy like all you were doing was trying to take the carburetor off and everything was just falling apart yeah. bolt by bolt. Uh, you stripped like three threads in like the matter of like five minutes. Yeah, first was the carburetor stud and the carburetor, and then the intake carburetor stud stripped, or pulled the thread, I shouldn't say stripped, it just pulled the threads out. Everything is just falling apart. The base plate screws are ready to fall off on the engine. Um, just all kinds of different issues. But we've got everything sorted out now. It's a miracle this thing won that last race <laughs> it was in. Like everything was holding on by a thread. Um, we got the mid plate in there now, so that's good. 
Um, we've got the new converter in there, new flex plate. Everything's tip top. Transmission's fresh. It sucks we can't really, we're not gonna know. We can't test this converter to see how well it's gonna work. And I know last night it looked really slow, but that's because we're trying new things. And when you try new things, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, it's easy to just do the same thing you've done forever and go at the same ET, the same mile an hour. But when you try to do new things, sometimes it works, like I said, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, you know, if we weren't doing that, we'd never get faster. So hopefully we'll be able to test later this week or maybe this weekend. We'll have, maybe we have to wait till the weekend. And uh, not sure where we're racing yet. It looks like rain every, everywhere that there's a decent race to go to. So we may end up just going somewhere local and testing. Just getting ready for Uncaged in a couple weeks. That race is pretty big to me because I, I went out there last year and I didn't do so well. Um, I know the race got rained out pretty early, but I didn't do very well first round. I lost to um, Phil West, I think is who I raced. And uh, it was a very close race, but anytime I lose first round, I don't, I don't forget that. And I never want to do that again, and I want to make sure that I don't look like an idiot when I go out there. And if I can't get it straight, we'll just run the Falcon. I mean, if we, if, if I can't, if I can't make this thing work on on a bare road, then we'll just run the Falcon over there. But we ain't giving up, so we're gonna keep testing and keep trying new things and try to make this thing competitive on blacktop with everything that we have right now anyway. I have a lot of upgrades coming for it, but for right now, this is what we've got to work with. So, we're gonna end this video out. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.